do it. It's Bor- Boris Johnson was Prime Minister the day before yesterday, and he's Prime Minister tomorrow, and he's going to go on being Prime Minister. And all we've done is learn roughly to... We've got a better measurement of the scale of opposition to Boris Johnson um, than before. Um, apart from that, um, I don't think that we're likely to have major changes. And obviously, uh, you know, the, the question was right, um, waiting for Boris Johnson to do the honourable thing. That is not the way that he works. One or two people have said that this is the worst possible result for the Conservative Party. And I don't agree with that, actually, because my view is the worst possible result would have been nobody voting no confidence in the Prime Minister. The the truth is that it shows at least 148 people get it, <laughs> um, even if that's not enough. Obviously, it's not the best result for the Conservative Party, which would have been for more than 180 Conservative members devoted against them, or at least in my uh, view. Uh, but the idea that the Conservative Party is, be, is better being stuck um, is, is, is stuck now, and um, it's, it's sort of better to be stuck than to be completely lacking in reality or in relationship to voters' views. I don't agree with that view. So um, I, I was actually encouraged by the fact that um, 148 people, it was roughly what I'd expected, actually. I, my estimate was 140. Um, I'd just and, like to point out, I did tweet that I thought it was going to be 150. That's very before good. Before the result happened. Based on nothing at all. Lots of Tory MPs I saw, journalists, they said, oh, I've got a spreadsheet. And they were, they were literally going through and just guessing yes. which way... Well, actually, you know, going. Sam Friedman, to be fair, the, the, um, who does a lot of tweeting, but uh, has also been a Conservative advisor in, uh, in the past, he, he guessed, he said 160, actually, based on using yeah. a spreadsheet. But I, I don't think... I think some of it was guesswork, and I, I looked at that, looked at some of the other evidence and used it to, to get yeah, about yeah. 140, yeah. Well, the signs were there right in front of us because... Uh, as Greg Hands, who MP for Danny's Football Club, tweeted last night, the um, bus stop outside Parliament has two bus services, one saying 148 and one saying 211. Which were exactly, <laughs> it, it was there, if only you knew where to look. Um, the 148, by the way, is a 24-hour service, so that suggests it can vary. Um, I, I didn't think it would be that high, but what's really interesting is, is that it's a, it's a coalition. This isn't a group of disaffected people on one issue or from one wing of the party. When, when Andrew Bridgen and Steve Baker can be up against sort of Damien Green and, and uh, Tobias Elwood, um, you know, he, he's, he's got problems. And I, got, I thought the reaction was ludicrous. I don't mind the lies. I don't mind the overspinning and, and the saying this is an extraordinary result. I am the greatest leader. But Boris Johnson and a few others, James Cleverly and, and, and that ministerial misnomer, came out and said... This showed he was actually more popular with the MPs than in 2019. This is because he got 51%, if you remember, in the final round ballot to see who went through to the grassroots in a three-horse race in which he only needed to come second. And, the other and to get 59% which... is therefore shows that he is much more popular than he was. But, I mean, Somebody obviously provided... By the way, because that used balls. to be my job, which was to provide, <laughs> to provide politicians with sheets which you could read off in what, whatever... You've done that as well, yeah, but, Patrick. But you had to be um, credible. Uh, you worked together, <laughs> and he used to do that too. So uh, the, the, um, we provide these sheets, and it's if this result, you say this. If the result is this, you say yeah. that. And one of them undoubtedly was, if you get this amount, use this argument, right? So they all used it. And like you, I thought to myself, my God, that's not a particularly good argument. The, the most important well, thing what, about... What, these... One of the problems with that argument, that, that he's got more the support of more Tory MPs now than he did in the Tory leadership contest, is that the, the Conservative Party it's not the same people. The, the, main, reason, the main reason why it doesn't matter... <laughs> Those of them ma- have left and I, new the, ones the, have arrived. The only reason why I wasn't concerned about that argument is it, it, because it's not true. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Or is it because it's fundamentally irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Well, I'm worried right? they might so, believe it's true. Well, who, who's going to believe... Who care? Who who cares enough about politics to follow that statistic and think about it who thinks it's convincing? Literally nobody. That's and true. and the most important thing about the result is that it is what it is, right? Mm. So a lot of the time, it's a bit like uh, we, we used to have this one this thing in central office where we were very concerned, conservative central office where I worked, wh- whether the, the focus groups would be kept secret. Uh, and uh, I kept saying... All the focus groups tell us is what people are already thinking. You yes. can't keep that secret from them because they think it already. So it does. If it appears in the newspaper that they think it, it doesn't change anything because they think it anyway. Not least um, as the conservative slogan at the time is, "Are you thinking so what we're thinking?" The truth is, he doesn't <laughs> enjoy more support than he enjoyed when he became leader, and it doesn't matter whether he says he does or not because he doesn't. Yeah, and we've got a couple of tests coming up, of course, in in a couple of weeks. The, the by elections in two very different parts of the country different electorates could be won by two different parties will be won by two uh, different parties by the way i mean and then, and then it depends yeah. how the how the party then responds to that 
um, to losing yes. two by-elections. I, I can't think there could be any member of parliament who voted in this leadership election um, who would vote differently after the by-elections. They must surely have l seen that the Conservative Party are going to lose not just Wakefield, but also the other one, right? Um, that's, that, that seems to me completely obvious. Um, and if they hadn't, if they had not factored in the fact that the Conservative Party is going to get hammered in that by-election, then, then they really don't deserve to be members of Parliament at all. But what we're going to get is is the, the scene of Boris Johnson stoutly defending the rules. He'll say, I, I've won a confidence vote, so the rules <laughs> say I can... And you know how I like rules, so I can't be challenged for another year. Yes. And it depends how Graham Brady and the 1922 committee come back with different rules. Do you think that that will happen, Danny? Or do you think that Conservative MPs will have to get, be slightly more creative about how they... Uh, express their discontent? No, I think uh, the 1922 committee will not change the rules. Uh, that um, the only moment of real danger that now lies ahead of him in the next year is the Privileges Committee. I think in those circumstances in which he, he might get suspended from Parliament, that does present, as it did before this vote, um, a challenge for him. The truth is he is stronger after this vote than he was before it. Everyone said thinks he's weaker, he's not. It's revealed how great the strength of feeling was against him and it's revealed that it wasn't as much as half the party. And as a result of it, he's got more lock-in um, against bad by-election results and the Privileges Committee than he had before. He's still vulnerable to both of those things. He's less vulnerable than he was. Not more vulnerable, but less vulnerable. So the demonstration that there was this Again, the support against him um, does not does not weaken him. It strengthens him because it gives him extra locks against this happening again. Do you think that there might be uh, a, a lot of letters from constituency party chairman and things like that after what weren't very good at local election results? Lots of people sure. lost their seats, and you know, if there's a stampede calling for him to go, you've got to you've got to ask yourself the question: What will be? What more will there be? And what will cause there to be more? Some members of the cabinet, Penny Morden, for instance, might well, go ahead of a reshuffle. That's true. That's but the, only, the only thing we didn't see yesterday was uh, ministerial resignations. It's, yeah, I mean, look, it was a very big factor in it. But why would they, if they didn't resign well, yeah, that's true. yesterday yeah, yeah. or before or in the run up to it, um, at a moment when, by the way, one or two of them or a group of them could have killed off the Prime Minister's leadership, that's quite clear, um, because he only, you know, he needed 20 people to, to go the other way. Um, 20, okay, 30 actually, I, I'm, I'm wrong. 30, 30 people, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's 30 people to go the other way, I think that could have been achieved, and it wasn't achieved because nobody did do it. Why would they do it tomorrow, what they didn't do yeah. yesterday? There's, there's talk of there being an upcoming reshuffle. Um, and, and I suppose that w might provoke people into action if they think they're going to lose their jobs. Yeah, but, you know, you're much weaker if you... Uh, I mean, uh, so I don't see them doing that in advance of that reshuffle, and uh, and I, once that's the reshuffle has happened, you lose the power to do it. Yes. So I, I, they've all made that choice, and, and it's a choice that... By the way, you know, it's one of these things where if you if you look at purely their own interests, in most cases... It made a lot of sense. There, first of all, in the case of everybody who wouldn't be a cabinet minister if Boris Johnson was not leader of the party, then secondly, in, in the case of people who would only be um, maybe slightly better a cabinet minister if John, Boris Johnson wasn't in the leader, who aren't going to gain much. And then there are those people who would go out on a limb, oppose uh, Boris Johnson, and then find out that he won anyway, and they're out of the cabinet. Uh, so therefore, it was telling that the only person who was willing to oppose him uh, at a sort of national level were Andrea Leadsom, not in the cabinet, and Jeremy Hunt, not in the cabinet. Yeah, I was quite intrigued by um, the tweet from Robert Buckland, the former Justice Secretary, who, who was one of those who, who doesn't have a government job, who, who supported Johnson. He's got a seat that's got a 6,000 majority and was to a Labour up until 2010, so might be under threat if, if there's a Labour surge. But, you know, perhaps he has been offered, say some kind words and you'll be back in the Cabinet. Otherwise, he would certainly have a grievance, having been rather unjustly sacked to save Dominic Raab. Uh, when, awesome. when I was in Parliament yesterday, uh, one, uh, I bumped up uh, one MP who said... Uh, Almost everyone in Parliament at some point had been offered uh, business secretary, um, uh, with the exception possibly of the current incumbent, uh, Kwasi Kwarteng. There's been a very small reshuffle, actually, because the only resignation we did have was a parliamentary aid, a PPS to... Uh, John Lamont. Uh, John Lamont. Uh, at the... Oh, no, this is the... Mini oh, no, no, no this, this isn't. This is a junior minister at the Ministry of Justice. Mm -hmm. So Christopher Bellamy QC uh, has been giving a peerage. 
uh, and we'll take up that that job in the in the, the House of Lords. So that's obviously there's a there's a job going, and Boris Johnson's decided to fill it with a new peer rather than. Um, well, no, he, that was that was sort of resignation of Lord Wolfson over the party. So he has to have a justice. Oh, he has so to have a justice. He has to have a justice minister. Yes, and it's a, interesting to me that he didn't appoint Martin Howe. There was some speculation in legal circles that he'd appoint the ultra Eurosceptic. Uh, Martin Howe to that job because Martin Howe wouldn't <laughs> resign over anything and would then be in Parliament to push on the Bill of Rights and to push on uh, the the uh, Northern Ireland Protocol, but he hasn't obviously not decided not to do that. The, the decline of Rishi Sunak earlier this year will have played a pretty decisive uh, role in the outcome last night, wouldn't you? I think it was important, although I think Boris Johnson would still have won, probably, unless Rishi Sunak had taken the decision to resign, in which case he might have increased his uh, chances of getting rid of Boris Johnson but reduced his own chances of winning the leadership. So uh, and now he's in a position whereby he couldn't achieve either of those things by um, by resigning. So, um, you know, everyone ta- has answering this question, where are we going now, as if as if there was an answer to that question. Maybe we're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, um, so so um, the, the answer to... Uh, to to it's Bor- Boris Johnson was Prime Minister the day before yesterday, and he's Prime Minister tomorrow, and he's going to go on being Prime Minister. And all we've done is learn roughly to... We've got a better measurement of the scale of opposition to Boris Johnson um, than before. Um, apart from that, um, I don't think that we're likely to have major changes. And obviously, uh, you know, the, the question was right, um, waiting for Boris Johnson to do the honourable thing. That is not the way that he works. Um, it's not. You know, I don't, I don't mean I, that sounds too arch. I don't. I don't mean it. it. He doesn't run by these kind of. He's more focused than that. If you want to use a positive term, or more ruthless, if you want to use a less positive term, he's not going to resign because people think he ought. Yeah, that's just not the way he's built. Well, I mean, the biggest loss is the world of Shakespearean scholarship because Johnson's book is now going to have to wait another couple of years. <laughs> but uh, I, I wonder what the Labour Party does next. Well, that was going to be my next question, is the Labour Party have... Uh, they put suit a, them to keep the, him? Well, exactly. This is the slightly ridiculous thing. Is the, the, the Labour MP, oh, he must do the right thing. He's got to do the honourable thing and go. This is, the, this is much... The last thing the Labour Party wants is the Conservative Party being able to go into another election being the, 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 the face of change. They're going to have a vote of no confidence, or something like that, isn't that? In the Commons, Labour have said there's going to be a yeah. vote on, on pr- does probity matter or something yes. like that. But but whenever that happens, the, 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 the Tories are never going to give them a scalp. So the 148 who backed Boris in this are not going to vote with Labour to, because it won't make any difference effectively. So it just, it just prolong- I, I do feel sorry for some of those Labour members who voted overwhelmingly to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn and were stuck with it. And there's nothing they could do to get... And they look at the Tories and they think, well, you had a chance to get rid of yours and you've not gone for it. I think that... Um, look, La- the La- Labour's in a fundamentally strong position because the electorate's turned against the Conservative Party and the Conservative Party's decided to keep its leader um, and actually didn't have an alternative leader. It's heading into a very difficult economic position with low leadership approval ratings and a poor economy. That makes it difficult to fight the election. I don't know about anybody else, and maybe this is a bit unfair... I was struck by how poor Keir Starmer was in his response. I thought it was, um, <coughs> the staging of it was poor. Uh, I thought the words weren't very good. Uh, I thought his delivery wasn't great. Um, I thought he sounded more robotic than um, than before. I, I don't hold the particularly negative view of him. It's difficult to get excited about him one way or the other, to be truthful. Um, you know, I don't think he's ever said a politically interesting thing. Um, but on the other hand, um, it does show, in, you know, I do trust his integrity, actually, generally speaking, um, uh, uh, sort of the, uh, the kind of level of the sort of issues we're talking about. There, there was a tweet last night from an actress, I can't remember which one, just saying, can't someone in, uh, in our industry please teach him how to deliver a line? No, the answer to that is no. Uh, and, and, and the reason for that is because... Because it isn't, it isn't really acting. You can improve a bit. Margaret Thatcher did do that, and she was given lessons. And I think actually, you could probably could benefit from it. But ultimately, they can't make him politically interesting when he's not really. Well, but inter- so actually, maybe it was that's a good thing. For last him. night, I was chatting to a, uh, well, I suppose quite a few Labour MPs, but one of them uh, was uh, actually quite cross that he'd done a statement at all. It was we had Keir Starmer's response to the vote before Boris Johnson's, and this is a fundamentally a. Conservative Party story. Why insert yourself? Why insert yourself badly into it? And everybody was saying, oh, that was a bit of a damn squib. When I did, I did watch it thinking, um, 
get off with trying to watch the opposition to the leadership going on here. Yeah, uh, and then I realized how hilarious that, is, that was <laughs> as a response. But yeah, I didn't think, I just thought it was poorly conceived and poorly timed. It's not the end of the world, to be honest. This is, this is a minor story. The, but, the, the main story is about Boris Johnson. Sp- but you're so right, it does speak to, uh, yes, the Labour Party are ahead. But Dominic Raab was on the show yesterday. <laughs> Dominic Raab has basically tried to argue that he couldn't believe the Labour Party weren't doing much better, given how bad everything else was, which is a reasonable point. It's not a bad point. Not, I mean, an odd one for a cabinet minister in the government to make, but it's a reasonable point. Um, and there is that, isn't there, Patrick, that if... If if on these big moments, actually when people are tuning in, you know, my phone was lit up yesterday with people who were not political people wanting to know what was going on, was he going to go, what do people say? They're tuning into this. And if they then see Keir Starmer, he delivers this slightly pointless, robotic, un, uneventful, um, you know, thing without any, uh, um, you know, none of it then lodges in people's minds, then he's not capitalising on these moments. And at some point... Danny says he's never said anything politically interesting. Is it possible he just doesn't have anything interesting to say? And does that matter? It may not matter. I mean, we, we may still be a couple of years away from a general election and just keeping on keeping on, but the nation isn't crying out for Keir Starmer. And I, oddly, the best thing that could happen to the Labour Party is if Starmer gets a fine from Durham Constabulary um, and has to stand down. I um, He's not impressive. And, and when you try to think what is actually said, what sticks in the mind is things like um, you can have a penis and be a woman. And, and, and that turns off some of the electorate, um, even though it's a more nuanced issue than, than, than Twitter would, would allow. I just don't think we have a cost of living crisis and Labour should be hammering the fact that under this government, um, people can't afford to heat their homes and they, they can't afford to eat. I mean, I think we should be, you're absolutely right. And I'll obviously, I'll obviously said a version of that too. Um, I think we should be careful not to get carried away from it. It by in the end, the Conservative Party is split. It has low leadership approval ratings of the leader it's decided to keep, and the economy is doing badly. When you're the leader of the opposition, being all right should be enough. I, I completely, I completely share Patrick's assessment of Keir Starmer, um, and um, I think it is the reason why they're not doing brilliantly. And I think. It's uh, that he also has some, not made any decisive, uh, de- decisive choices in terms of his coalition either. So there are lots of things that I think he's put off. Uh, but Labour could actually deprive the Conservative Party of a majority, not necessarily win one itself, but deprive it of a majority with fairly little. And the big story yesterday, whatever the the. M- the correct observations about Keir Starmer wasn't really about Keir Starmer. I'd, I'd love to know your view, Danny, on one thing the Tories could do to, to fight back against, against Labour is against threats of a general strike. And we had a big London-wide strike yesterday. The, the unions are now talking about burying their muscles even more. Labour are going to be scared to take them on on that. Yeah. Is that something that the, for the Conservatives to fight the back The politics of inflation are certainly difficult for Labour, but the truth is that um, during much of the... The reason we had the 1970s was that the electorate supported quite a lot of anti-inflation cost of living strikes um, and wanted a government that could deal with the unions and on some basis and only when that really ran out as an approach and people learnt you know which took which took the best part of 15 years did the electorate turn to an alternative approach and even then only you know by by a smaller a smallish margin then then it was appreciated it did work and uh, there was more support for it but that folk memory has probably died out yeah. and you might well start that cycle again so i don't i i think it is a challenge for labor uh, i think they will have some questions and i'd done a program with their transport uh, shadow spokesman his answers were terrible on the question of strikes he was all over the shop he didn't know what what to say really so it's a big challenge for them but the assumption we're making, which is that the electorate will side with the the kind of the employers against the employees in strikes, that isn't really borne out by um, you know by a lot of the experience we had with. Uh, we're siding the with the customers rather than the employees, isn't it? Yes, that's true. And 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 look, that argument works for me completely. Uh, it's it's probably one of the main reasons why I'm a conservative, um, and. Um, you know, I think those strikes, in the end, they're striking against their own jobs and their own standard of living, that's why. And disrupting everybody else's life as well, because I think that in the long run, it's impossible for them to strike up their wages, right? Yeah. But uh, because that's, that's economically impossible, yeah. unless they're exploiting a monopoly. Um, so uh, that's one of the main reasons I'm a Conservative, but that doesn't mean it's politically, it may work with me, but that doesn't mean, unfortunately, that it'll necessarily work with the electorate. 